welcome to the We Don't Have Cookies Christmas episode with your host, Jason Marshall. Hey, everybody. Thanks for downloading the show. Sorry about the unexpected time off. I'll talk more about that later. This episode, I'm taking a page from the Charles Dickens classic novel, A Christmas Carol, where I'll be talking to guests from the podcast Past, Present, and Future. My last guest does it all from comedy to paranormal investigations to tarot card readings. You may have seen her on The Late Show with David Letterman or heard her on the Bob and Tom radio show. To talk about the future, comedian Karen Rontowski will be returning to the show to give me a tarot card reading. To talk about the present, another returning guest, Kenny the Star Maker Bolin, will be here for the first time in months. But my first guest from the past goes all the way to the very first year of the podcast. We've been best friends, we've been bitter enemies, and at times, sensual lovers. And like all good M&Ms, he's pure milk chocolate. It's comedian Mike Morris. How you doing? I'm doing great. I'm doing great, Jay Boogie. Jay Boogie, thanks for having me. Since I'm doing a show based on A Christmas Carol, which has ghosts visiting Ebenezer Scrooge, you were the best choice for the guest from the past since you told people once that I was a ghost. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you, yeah, that didn't go over so well. <laughs> for those of you who may not know, Mike did a Facebook prank a few years ago where he told people that I died, and I didn't see it until it was too late, and it did not go over well at the local comedy scene. Not, not at all. There was so many people pissed off at me; it was ridiculous. <laughs> I mean, I had comics pissed. I think your grandmama got pissed off at me. <laughs> and you know, it was you don't piss off me, Ma. <laughs> And it was crazy because you had every, I know it sounds weird. Everybody needs to hear this out though. You had every right to do what you were going to do because the day before I had a, uh, a birthday party on the radio. And as you were leaving, you were one of the guests, you were the first guest on the show. And as you were leaving, exactly. you said that you were going to tell people that I died on my birthday, which was the following day. And I was busy trying to get things ready for the next guests. And I think somebody was coming in as you were leaving. And I, yeah, it was, it was. Uh, Mike, I think Mike Canisterro, he was coming yeah. in at the time. And it was one of those times where I was just distracted. And you know how, when people say things to you, you just don't process it. You just kind of nod and smile or whatever. <laughs> so I gave you the go <laughs> ahead. <don't>, <laughs> right. Don't do that shit with me. Because, hey, I, I told you, I said, you know what would be cool if I just told everybody that you die tomorrow? And he was like, ah, it was, it was funny. Fine. At that moment, so I was like, oh, well, shit, Jason gave me the green light. Let's do this shit. And, you, and man, it did not go over well. <laughs> but you were a big part of the podcast first year or so. You even hosted one of our stand-up shows. Yeah, I did. I did. It was really cool. Um, I always enjoy your podcast because you have interesting topics. Definitely great guest, and uh, your fans are, you know, welcoming. Uh, I remember um, back when we did, what was it, the Black Mamba episode, yeah. and I was talking about my ex-wife. God rest her soul. No, I'm just kidding. The bitch <laughs> is still alive. But um, <laughs> we was talking about her and how I nicknamed her the Black Mamba because I swear everything this chick touch dies a little bit inside. <laughs> And I'll have a link to that episode in the show notes if people want to go back and listen. The other reason that I wanted to bring you here today is there's going to be a podcast meetup Saturday, March 2nd at Dave & Buster's from 6 to 9 p.m. in Columbus, Ohio. Mike, I know you're in the area. Would you be interested in stopping by and being part of the recordings for the podcast and the stand-up show? Absolutely. You come into my town, i got to come. Uh, what day is that again? <laughs> March 2nd. That's a Saturday. Oh, perfect. Yes, absolutely. Mark it on my calendar as we speak. So you can go ahead and count me in. I will definitely be there. All right. And that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm going to talk about that more at the end of the show. What are you hoping to get this Christmas? I've had a couple of people ask me that question. And I've had my sister, my, my baby sister, who like one of my biggest supporters when it comes to uh, when I do stand up. And she asked me what I wanted for Christmas. I said, you know what I really want for Christmas? I want your weed man to have peace in his life because every time he skip on your bag, you got an attitude. I mean, seriously, she walks around like 
someone stole her cookies. Like she a little fat kid and they stole her cake or her candy. I swear she'll be grumpy, angry, frustrating. Because right now, you know, my sister and I live together. And I swear, every time the weed man skims on her bag, I got to hear about it. And it's like a 30, 45 minute conversation about how this motherfucker don't understand how supportive she's been and how he back she backs him and every I mean it's it's, it's bad Jason it's seriously bad so I want I want my sister's weed man to have peace on peace on earth I know the and feeling peace in his life I know the feeling because here we don't have any cookies and by the way to <laughs> listeners out there I just realized I had one of my settings wrong on the mixer this whole time. I was cleaning it off uh, yesterday and did not realize that. So uh, apologize if it, hopefully it sounds better and hopefully it didn't sound too bad before, but uh, I know you're a busy guy. You can't stay. Is there anything you'd like to say before you go? Uh, the one thing I want to say is I want to thank you guys for supporting my man, Jay Boogie. Uh, that's my, my nickname for him. That's uh, <laughs> kind of like my, uh, my, my catchphrase for uh, Jason. He's a, uh, one heck of a guy. He's always supported me. He's always backed me when I had to do comedy or I wanted to do comedy or even times when, you know, I felt like maybe this wasn't for me and I took a hiatus or stepped out. He always welcomed me back into the fold and he's a really great guy. I want to wish everyone a Merry Christmas. I want to make sure everyone listens to Jason's podcast. Also, I want to make sure you all understand that in this world, you get one life. So you might as well look at all the bad shit and make some funny out of it and enjoy each other. And God bless everyone. And uh, hopefully you'll see me out there soon again. I'm about to start doing uh, shows again here uh, in the first of the year. Took a pretty long hiatus because I had a lot going on, but I'm ready to get back on stage. I kind of miss it. It's been calling me uh, right every day. And if you enjoy anything that I do, I uh, hope that you'll show up and support Looking forward to seeing you back on stage, and I want to thank you for being on the show today. I'm going to play a quick message from UFC Hall of Famer Dan the B. Severn, a song by the Arrogant Worms, and when I come back, I'll be joined by Kenny the Star Maker Bolin. I am UFC Hall of Famer Dan the B. Severn, and you're listening to We Don't Have Cookies. Merry Christmas, everyone. Oh. Your ass, he's gonna kick your ass, he's gonna kick your ass. Santa's coming and he's gonna kick your ass, cause you've always been a rotten little brat. Reindeer coming and they're gonna bite your reef, they're gonna chew your welcome mat, swallow your kitty cat. Reindeer coming and they're gonna eat your begonias, cause Santa hasn't fed them in a month. Santa's coming and he's gonna kick your ass, he's gonna kick your ass, he's gonna kick your ass. Santa's coming and he's gonna kick your ass Cause he's sick of shoveling snow and reindeer poo Elves are coming and they're gonna steal your turkey Wreck your TV, burn down your Christmas tree Elves are coming and they're gonna trash your home Cause they ain't got nothing else to do Santa's loaded with attitude He's loud and drunk and smelly and rude His workshop's been closed by an auditor And Mrs. Claus ran off with her chiropractor Oh, Santa's coming and he's gonna kick your ass He's gonna kick your ass He's gonna kick your ass Santa's coming and he's gonna kick your ass Cause he's had a really crappy year my bummers Uh, hi, this is Trevor Strong of the Arrogant Worms Wishing you a Merry Christmas Joining me now is a man who has been a part of the show ever since the beginning and is still close to this day. I just co-hosted his podcast last week for the first time in months. It's the one and only Kenny the Star Maker Bolin. Or did you co-host my show? <laughs> <laughs> a lot of people said you were the invisible man. <laughs> a lot well, of people said you were the guy in the corner just watching. <laughs> I opened. <laughs> you did open the show. You did open. Uh, at what point did this this troll, this possibly former co-host of mine and i have a list of them a mile long it looks like a looks like a wanted list from the old west all the old co did he pop in around the 45 minute mark or was it even later you know I, i'm not I, sure I that he took someone posted a promo of the rock on twitter and they said you think this was great boland did oh it was it was uh the rock cutting a promo on on billy gunn 
And this was a, an attorney, uh, Dustin Duquesne in Poland. He's a 20 year attorney. Here's the two great compliments he gave me. Number one, he said, after seeing that, I've been a lawyer for 20 years, a prosecuting attorney. Mr. Boland, I do not ever want to go up against you in a courtroom. I have <laughs> never seen someone defend their case any stronger and any harder than you did. And to see a grown man sit there and take what you did to him for 45 <laughs> minutes. He says, on my best day, sir, I could not compete with you. He said, it's a shame that you did not go to law school. He says, because if you had, you would have a mansion in Hawaii <laughs> and it would have been retired for probably 15 years now. Had you gone that course? I said, yeah, I fucked up. Yeah, the, other thing he, the other thing he said, he said he posted a promo of the rock and the rock promo went about four minutes, maybe five. And it was the rock. Just, just, just belittling the shit out of Billy Gunn. You know who Billy Gunn is, I guess. Yeah. <clears throat> he says, folks, you think this was something Bolin did this to his co-host for 45 fucking minutes. <laughs> in this, in this case, the rock couldn't lace my boots <laughs> for what I did to Daniel Spencer, that little gap tooth bitch who thinks he's in my, but we don't need to do this whole show. If you folks, if you want to see it, go to www.youtube.com backslash the bowling alley. Watch last week's show and tab up to the 44 minute mark. <clears throat> now you get to edit some. Where, where, we where, 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 I've been <clears throat> dying for that. <laughs> where, I knew you were. Where were we? We were about to talk about your brother, Biscuits and Gravy, and see if he's been caught in any more casino shitting himself. That was one of the best episodes that we've ever done is where you guys came on the show. You wanted to talk about a funny story that you read. Uh -huh. And the more we read into the story, <laughs> the yeah. more it seemed like it was your brother. And I'm pretty convinced yeah, it, it was. I think the evidence went in the direction that it was. Uh, have you ever seen? I don't know how much football you follow, but last uh, two weeks ago, when Miami, uh, when New England played Miami in Miami, Miami had the ball down five points, 76 yards away from the goal line, seven seconds on the clock. The NFL st statistics say that New England has a 99.99999% chance of winning this game. And I was about to say it was against New England, and Belichick, he just plans for everything. Plans for everything. He even put Gronk out on the field, which ended up being the demise of the whole situation. Had Gronk <laughs> not been on the field, big clumsy fucking white guy who thinks he's a comedian, you should be offended by this. Have you ever heard seen Gronk do comedy? No, I, I had no idea he tried. Well, he has a comedy special on Netflix. Really? It is the worst attempt at comedy I have ever seen. You all have paid me great compliments with your network. You said that I'm the only technically non-comedian that you have on your show. And you said that many of your comedians say that I should do stand up. The only problem is I can't stand up. <laughs> um, and I would love to do comedy, but I can't recite shit. I would have to be Don Rickles. I just go out, look in the audience, and, and would find shit to say and do. I can't recite shit. And unless I tell stories. Now, if I tell stories, that's a bit of a recital because obviously you remember your stories and then hope you enhance them each time you tell them. Uh, Cornette and I used to have shit we'd do on his show. I said, Jimmy, did I ever tell you about the time that biscuits and gravy went to the casino? Yeah, yeah, Kenny, you told us. I said, well, let me tell you again. I may have changed the ending. <laughs> <laughs> and then that, you know, so that became a thing. Well, Kenny, tell it again, but would you at least change the ending? <laughs> sure. <laughs> I don't remember what the ending was. It'll have to be different. Uh, so that was an, a, a very nice compliment that, that I got from you guys. But the, as, as far as biscuits and gravy goes, I can't tell you much about him because he is such an avid Trump supporter. And you know my tolerance with those people. If you're just smart enough not to promote him on my shows, not to try to get me to say good things about him, then, I, then I'll still be friends with you. And I do have a few Trump supporters that I'm still friends with. But if you're going to go on my wall and post memes and bash Democrats and independents and promote his fucking ass, you get one warning. And then after that warning, you're gone. Many of them are gone. Well, my, my brother just couldn't help himself. I said, if you want me to remain your brother, shut your fucking mouth about Trump and we will we will get through this. I didn't go around for eight years telling you how great Obama was. I didn't go around for eight years telling you how great the Clintons were. Well, I got a topic I want to get your opinion on. 
I have been. You got me off, got me off that Trump thing in a hurry. <laughs> I have been very. I don't talk about politics on here. I'm sick of hearing about the guy. I do. Um, <laughs> I've been to a bunch of Christmas concerts lately because my kids in the uh, school band. And we had to do this thing. Well, there's something to be proud of. They, they play the tuba or the organ. <laughs> we had to go to the small town concert thing. You know, you know, Clinton was in the band. Clinton was six foot four, 255 pounds. He didn't play for the football team at Arkansas. He was in the band. <laughs> that's a, that's a Tim Wilson joke. He's dead now. A great comedian, a personal friend of mine. He was great. Really? Yeah. Oh, you didn't. Oh, you didn't know I was friends with Tim Wilson. No. Do you got a good Tim Wilson story? God damn. Probably a thousand of them. Tim Wilson was one of my dearest friends. He was a huge wrestling fan. Well, let's hear him. Guess who, uh, guess who Tim's favorite wrestler in the whole world was. Who's that? The American dream. Dusty Rhodes. He loved Dusty Rhodes. See, Tim was down in Atlanta and Tim was a Republican. One of the few diehard Republican fans that I, I liked, he would even his, his opening, if his comedy wasn't going over good, if, if he didn't feel he was getting a laugh and he would say it, whether he was getting laughs or not, you know how comedians are, you know, Rodney would type the mic. Is this thing on? <laughs> this thing on? And they, the people would be laughing their ass off, but he would act like they're not hearing it. It was just part of the act. Well, Tim would get into his act and he smoked during the show and sweat like a motherfucker. He probably had four bath towels on stage with him just to wipe all the sweat that was. Well, you remember, you remember what he looked like. Yeah. And, um, diehard Republican, his whole act was pro Republican to, to a degree. And, and he, but he would even make fun of him a little bit, but if the act wasn't going good, he'd go, I smell Democrats in this room. <laughs> <laughs> and then more often than not, it'd probably be about a 70, 80% democratic crowd most of the time, because they thought it was funny to hear him, uh, do his uh, Republican act. They just thought it was funny. One of the saddest days in my life is when I got the word that he had passed away. Chris had contacted me and told me, and I probably didn't have a better friend, especially in comedy, but just a good friend. I mean, he always called me before he was coming in town. He was so popular in Louisville that he did two weeks here every year during Derby week and every year during Halloween. And he always sold out every motherfucking show at like 40 bucks a pop. And I always felt bad for him because I didn't know how much of that money the club was getting. Because he, he always drove. He never flew. He, and he mainly worked in the South. And he got on HBO once on some special. And I thought that was going to be the launch code for him. Because he he to me, he was one of the funniest men I ever knew. And it wasn't because he was a friend. Yeah, and I'll tell you who you wanted a biscuits and gravy story. I'll tell you who introduced me to him was Biscuits and Gravy. I'd never heard of him. Really? Tim had been going to see him down at the club for, I guess, a couple of years or so. And they had just come up out of conversation one day. He says, uh, he says Kenny, he says, why don't you go to the club with me and see Tim Wilson? Well, anybody that Tim likes, I probably ain't going to like. <laughs> you know, if Tim finds him funny, I probably. <laughs> well, Tim loved his pro Republican spin on shit. So that was one reason he liked him and him making fun of Democrats and everything. So Tim just going to sit there and hoot during that shit. And he said, well, man, why don't you give him a chance? I guarantee you, you're going to laugh your fucking ass off if you go with me. I said, all right, if you guarantee it. And I said, and you're buying dinner after the show. Back then, he could afford dinner. <laughs> and uh, barely. So we go to the show, and I tell you, man, I didn't know this guy. Never met him. Didn't know anything about him. Walked in first time I ever saw him. I said, Tim Wilson is the funniest son of a bitch I've ever fucking seen in my life. He even had Uncle BS stories he told that eventually he gave me credit for because of me being the king of BS and my briefcase had BS on it. And when he saw that he died, uh, but it turned out that Tim was watching me on television on Saturday nights. Cause his act would end maybe 10 o'clock, 10, 15 on Saturday nights. And then he'd go home to the hotel and he watch. he was a big wrestling fan. So he said he'd been watching me for years and how it came to be Tim and Tim Wilson and Tim biscuits and gravy had become decent friends. Not enough that he was getting comped or anything but decent friends and they would talk and yak after the show. And then eventually the topic of wrestling came up and he said, have you ever heard of my brother? Tim said, yeah, I watch him just about every Saturday night. Whenever I'm in Louisville, he says, I'm here for two weeks and I get to catch a couple of Kenny's shows. He said, I might see Kenny about four times a year. He says, why do you know him? Then Tim's name was Tim razor, my brother. And he says, yeah, he says, Kenny Bowen's my brother. He's wait a minute. You're Tim razor. He's Kenny Bowen. And he said, this is a long story, but we're brothers. <laughs> Oh my God. He said, well, you got to bring him to the show. Well, Tim was trying to ambush me. He didn't, 
I didn't know that Tim was dying to meet me and I didn't know who he was anyway. <clears throat> so I go to that show and the, and the end of the show finally happens. And, and he, Tim was right. I laughed from the time I got there to the time the show ended. It got to the point where Wilson was not only inviting me, but all the WWE contract guys. I took John Cena, Sean O'Hare, Mark Henry, um, Jim Cornette went a couple of times. I mean, and, and all of us just fucking died. And uh, there was one time that me and all the wrestlers were at one table. There was like eight wrestlers and me in there. And, of course, I was 300 pounds then, too. And Tim Wilson, during the middle of the show, looks over. And says, God damn. Looks like the fucking Cartwrights just invaded this show. Look at them big time bitches. <laughs> God damn. Eight of them over there. Not a fucking date amongst them. <laughs> that was the truth. It was just eight guys <laughs> sitting at a table. Not a fucking date amongst us. And any, it, he always loved making you part of the show. So I took my mother once and, and mom's mom was selective. Mom bowling. You never knew what she was going to find funny. Well, have you ever seen the, the, the old women you take to a show and then they think they're part of the act and they have to talk back to the act? Yeah. Well, that's my mother. Well, <laughs> Tim made the sad mistake of putting me and my mom front row table dead center on his microphone. He's standing directly above us. And then mom, and of course, is smoking a cigarette. Back then, you could smoke a cigarette in the comedy clubs because he did. He wouldn't have performed if he couldn't have smoked. <laughs> so <laughs> he's smoking, mom's smoking, and he's just, God damn, woman, looks, looks like someone set a soap on fire in here. <laughs> yeah, yes, sir, it does look like that. And so, you know, most people don't talk back to him in the course of the act. Well, mom did <laughs> through the whole show. <laughs> You just cut out. So, uh, all right. Well, your, your mom was talking back during the whole show. That's the last yeah, thing I heard. Okay. We'll pick it up from there. Yeah. So, yeah, mom's talking back during the whole goddamn show. Everything Tim says, mom is interacting with. And Tim is, goddamn lady, he says, Do you, you go to the movies and talk back to the screen? Just sit back and relax, Tim. <laughs> just sit back and relax. <laughs> Take it easy. Can he get a control on that woman? <laughs> Can you move her to the back for me? <laughs> I'd like to do the show if you don't mind. <laughs> And I said, well, you're the one who placed your ears. And now I'm talking back to him. Hey, it was your idea. <laughs> you're the one who set the old bag here. And, uh, oh, it was just so funny. And, of course, I never took her back to another show. <laughs> <laughs> she just, once once he acknowledged her presence by, God damn, ma'am, you set a soap on fire. <laughs> and once she did that, she thought she was part of the show. That's why she sat in front row. And she loved it. She laughed her ass off. But. Yeah, Tim was having a little trouble getting through his act that night. <laughs> and uh, but anytime the wrestlers were there, he'd always he'd drag us into the show and make fun of us. And Kenny, and he would introduce me to the crowd on every show. Ladies and gentlemen, Kenny Bowling, Kenny Star, Mega Bowling, big wrestling star. But now he was one of the funniest motherfuckers I ever knew. If, if any of y'all are listening, uh, if you're on the YouTube or however you can bring him up, just Google Tim Wilson. And the one you got to hear, uh, do you, do you know this a bit? The Bobby Bowden story? No. What uh, that Bobby Bowden, what a great general he would have been. No, I don't remember that one right off. Yeah. Oh, bring that one up folks. I can tell a little bit of it, but it's hard to do it justice. But he talked about what a great general Bobby Bowden would have been the coach of the Florida state Seminoles <laughs> because Bobby always found the best of any horrible situation. You know what? Uh, uh, it, it was a tough one out there today. Those are good kids. They're good kids. And, uh, so I'm not going to tell you much of it cause I want you to hear him tell it cause I can't do it justice. But the, uh, the thing is, is that those are good kids. Those are good. Well, Bobby, those kids got caught shoplifting at a Dillard's <laughs> in Florida. Yeah, I know, but they good kids. They good kids. They were just shopping for their grandmama. They just shopping for grandma for Christmas. They just forgot to pay for it. They good kids. They good kids. And uh, so that's the gist of the story is that the Florida State Seminoles were all they were all under indictment of some type. All the all these students were being suspended, kicked out of college. But Bobby was putting the most positive spin on it ever. And then Tim tells the story. What if Bobby Bowden were in charge of a, a little bighorn? <laughs> what if he were the general? <laughs> you got to hear it. It's on YouTube. And I encourage you to go listen to it. And especially you. Um, uh, what's your name? Uh, Marshall Dillon, <laughs> James Marshall, Marshall That's Haynes, <laughs> Marshall Haynes. We had like four Marshalls on the show the other day. I got, I got Marshall, the host and three of our fans uh, had the last name Marshall or the first name Marshall Haynes. He yeah. had, why didn't your mom just name you Marshall Marshall? I would have been, <laughs> maybe she was a big Brady bunch fan. Marshall Marshall. <laughs> <laughs> I bet you've never heard that one told on you before. No, I Marshall, haven't. Marshall, 
<laughs> it didn't, it didn't uh, that rapper's name, isn't his real name, Marshall? Marshall Mathers, yeah. Marshall Mathers, there you go. Well, Marshall right. Marshall would have been even better. You could have been a great rapper. <laughs> I could have been the real Eminem. The real um, Eminem. You certainly, the real, the real, the real uh, comedy shady. All right, Kenny, I know you got to go to lunch. Is there anything that you want to say before you go? Oh, certainly check out my YouTube show. It's, it's, I think we're even listed as comedy because it is. Uh, there's something funny happens on every damn show. The Maya Doodle, uh, does the Facebook live shows with me. We quit calling those the bowling alley because we didn't want to confuse people. So the Facebook live shows we do every Monday night around seven o'clock. Uh, your old buddy, the Maya Doodle, who's done some of your voiceovers on your show because she speaks five languages and have has the most lovely voice ever. That's right. She but did the special both. intro to this episode. Oh, did she do this one too? That's right. And uh, I didn't know that. Uh, I was asleep. <clears throat> but yeah, check those out on Facebook Live every Monday night at 715. They're always funny. We just talk about current events, a little politics, just whatever the fuck. She hates to talk about wrestling. So if wrestling comes up because they're interactive shows, the fans can... Uh, uh, ask questions during the course of the show, just like on my YouTube live shows. And those we do live every, I think I do those on Thursday night. Yeah. Those are Thursday nights at eight o'clock. And so they're live there. And then uh, the audio versions go up a day or two later on iTunes, but really about any of them. I, I pay good money to be, be heard on all of them, but I just recently started doing the audio version. And, uh, and if you want my merchandise, go to my Twitter page at star maker Bowen to follow me on Twitter. And my merchandise page is to the left-hand side. You can click the link, pick what you want and then write my inbox. The more you buy, the better price you get. So you have to deal with me personally to actually buy this shit. <laughs> isn't that, isn't that rare? You don't, you just don't click shit and buy it. You got to deal with me because I want to fuck you on price. <laughs> Sounds good. I want to thank you for being on the show today. Well, go ahead and thank me, man, if you want to. <laughs> I'm going to play a few quick messages from some of the We Don't Have Cookies family, and I'll be back with psychic comedian Karen Rontowski. Hey, this is Dave Nelson from Comedy A Go Go. Happy holidays to everybody. If you like the show and you would like to help it grow, go to we don't have cookies.com and click the Get Involved tab at the top of the homepage. There are a lot of things that you can do that won't cost you any money and would take less than two minutes to do. You can also scroll to the bottom of the website and click the donate button. This is Frank and McDowell. Merry Christmas. We don't have cookies. My next guest is the guest of Cookies Future, the official psychic of the podcast. It's the one and only comedian, Karen Rontowski. How you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing good. You haven't been on since the three-year anniversary of the episode back in July. What have you been up to? Well, first of all, my podcast, Paranormal Karen, has been keeping me busy, and I love it. I had no idea I was going to love it so much. <laughs> and uh, right now, I'm at my parents' assisted living, so I'm kind of dealing with two parents with dementia. So uh, <laughs> I might say I'm a little distracted, but I'll try. I'll do some readings for you here real quick, and we'll see what we can get. How about that? Awesome. I appreciate it. So we're going to get right into it. This has been a crazy year for me. My first question <laughs> is, when are things going to turn around? Okay, got it. Let's see what this year brings in. When is your birthday, Jason? June 9th. June 9th. So June is 6, 6, 9. Okay, 6 and 9 is 15, 6, 7, 8. Okay, so after your birthday, it should be a very good, or I should say, of um, your business. You'll be in a year that's all about business, which means you will either straighten out what is wrong or things that are on the right track will start moving better. But it'll be a big career year for you after your birthday. And and now I'll just do a general for sort of your luck. That's what we'll call it, your <laughs> luck, and for things getting better. Okay. okay. Oh, man. And you do know, as I tell everyone, uh oh, here come some people. I tell everyone, this year, 2018 to 2020, are all heavy life lesson years. So they're going to be hard for everyone. And they are also going to be. Um, uh, if we're not doing something, if we're not straightening ourselves out, the universe is going to do it for us, which we do not want. OK, okay. Um, we want to be facing our lessons and and uh, moving on and, and sort of having that at us. So, OK, so as I do your layout for the year, 
The first thing is it is showing the disappointment and it shows you walking away from something that I want to say you waited a little too long to get rid of. And I'm going to interpret that two ways. You're going, you're on your way to getting rid of those things that restrict you. Okay. And you have sort of done this a little bit yourself and a little bit through others, but even your brain is going to be ready to move forward. Now, I wish I could tell you everything was going to go in line, but it doesn't because at the beginning of this year, I do see you realizing a lot of things or sort of um, it's funny that we think, oh, no, I, you, like you might be thinking, I don't know what she's thinking about wrapping up and getting rid of. And But as time goes on, you're going to be like, I know exactly what she's talking about. I couldn't see it then. And I feel like this is the first part of the year. Okay. okay. Now, the second part not only looks much better, but there is some sort of a job opportunity the second half of the year, which is in line with what you want to do. OK, and that is going to bring you into a much better place the second half of the year. The only thing is it's moving you forward, but you're still going to feel a little stuck. OK, so I want to say it's moving you forward into a better place, but it's not quite like, yeah, we're on our way. OK, does that make sense to you? Yeah, there's also the second half of the year. For some reason, family is going to be in line and in a good way. Oh, okay. It's going to be all like the second half, second half of the year. Once you get past that other birthday, I feel like things are going to get better. But there's a lot of things that either you haven't looked at or they didn't occur to you that it's time to start moving them out. OK, I'm, I'm taping something. Can OK, yeah, we got to go fast. I'm sorry, okay. Jason. <laughs> My last question is, what do you see in the future of the podcast? OK. Okay, have you thought about bringing someone in on it, a partner? I have been thinking about collaborating with other people whose podcasts are kind of like mine. Um, other okay. than that, that's that's the only thing I could think of right off. Okay, I have to tell you something interesting. I don't think by next year this podcast is the one you're going to be doing. Oh, I think there's going to be a different one, and this one actually may either end or just piggyback into the next podcast. Okay. But, I mean, there's a whole change. There's a whole change of name. There's a whole change of stuff. And I have to tell you, this is going to seem really scary to you. But not only is it the right thing to do, but when we talk about you being stuck or things that are – um let me put it this way. You're in charge of everything. We all know that. We all don't know how to get up and get ourselves unstuck. Mm -hmm. Yet at the same time, we have the answers. This next year is going to be a shift and a change where you're going to have to really look at it and you're really going to have to take a leap. And let me tell you something. When you change this podcast or change to the next one or change the name or the logo or something, but it's almost like a big shift. You're not losing anything because the fans that are with you are going to come with you, but you are next year for career are going to have an enormous change from within. That's okay? very interesting because on the last few episodes, I've been telling everybody that there's, uh, there's going to be a change coming in January. Yeah. And I want to tell you, and I want to give you a warning here. You're going to feel like some things are dying or dying off, or not right. And I want you to just remember, the things that are going away are making room for what is new. And the rest is up to you to really get things moving. You're going to have a big emotional healing the first part of the year, okay? Mm -hmm. So I wish I could tell you, like I said, these next couple of years are going to be life lessons and like stuff just getting knocked out of the way that is in your way. So this, and I do think there's a collaboration. It's not going to stick forever, but here's the thing. People will find you and know you. So this next year, figure out what risk means to you and take it. All right. That sounds great, Karen. I want to thank you for coming on the show today. Where do okay. you see the future of your podcast, Paranormal Karen? You know what? My podcast has been doing really well and it's, it's been, um, I've been on a couple of kind of famous 
podcast and the numbers keep growing and I cannot believe how happy I am with it. Good. And it's um, it's like every guest I want says yes. And I can't believe it. And then these great guests are falling in my lap. This may be part of the risk I want you to take. Once you start reaching out, Jason, and and finding what is within you that like, you know what, I do want famous or whatever. I have not had anyone not answer my email to be on my podcast. That's very and everyone impressive. has said yes. <laughs> and it is getting so fun. And um, yeah, it's really it's really good. And and it's very funny because like all my comedian friends, they don't even know that I have a paranormal podcast. <laughs> they know, <laughs> but you know, they don't listen because yeah. they're not into the paranormal. So I have sort of found this whole other audience that is now coming to shows and I'm thrilled. It's a really good podcast. She also has another podcast called Karen and Kira Can Read. If you like what she did here today, there's more of that over there. And they can also go to KarenRontowski.com and get your own tarot reading. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to take a quick break and I'll be back. Hey, listeners, this is comedian Gary Henry from the show's first episode. Wishing you a very Merry Christmas and Happy New Year. Want to contact the show? Send an email to Jason at WeDon'tHaveCookies.com or call 929 929- Two six six nine three four two, and leave a voicemail. Well, I wasn't expecting Karen to say any of that about the podcast, but that's what I like about her. Whatever she sees in the cards, that's what she says, and she doesn't hold anything back, even if it means telling the person on the podcast that she is on that their podcast is going to end soon. <laughs> I hope that part was wrong, but... Uh, Actually, I hope all of it was wrong because that is not what I wanted to hear. It's been a rough year and I wanted her to say everything's going to be great starting right now, but uh, I fully intend to keep this show going. I've had some breaks here and there lately, but I'm going to try to keep that from happening moving forward. I've said that I was going to uh, start recording some backup episodes to put out when something comes up. I'm going to do my best to get on that really soon, so next year will be much more consistent as far as the episodes being released go. But with the holidays, things have been really hectic, especially the last couple of weeks, which is why I haven't put anything out. Had to go to a few Christmas concerts that my daughter was in. She had an award ceremony, a couple of basketball games, and my wife and I, we had to watch over a bake sale that the school's band was holding, and I didn't even know we were going to do that. We just showed up with some stuff that we made to put in the bake sale. And it turns out nobody was in charge of actually selling anything. So (laughs) we ended up manning the booth and um, I had to decorate the house to get everything ready. I put that off because I thought that we were going to have the uh, window in here replaced as well as the door. And since they didn't do that, I ended up doing that last or, um, Last week or the week before, I forget now, things have been crazy, but had to do some home improvements and go Christmas shopping and (laughs) all kinds of stuff, so time just slipped away from me. I was going to talk about this earlier with Kenny, but we ended up talking about Tim Wilson instead. I had to go to the small town Christmas concert. They had a group of people who were singing Christmas songs, a lady who played a few instrumental songs on the piano, and an adult choir singing classic Christmas songs. And my daughter, she was playing in in the intermission with her uh, school band. I was there for, I don't know, a couple of hours just to watch my kid play for 10 minutes. Anyway, when the choir got on stage, there was about 20 or 30 people. And this little old lady was conducting them. And, you know, where they just raise their hands in different directions to show them what key they're supposed to sing in, I guess. And it made me wonder just what the hell is she doing up there? I kind of understand it for bands, sort of, but I really don't get it for a choir, especially a choir of adults, because is anybody up there singing off key just because the director made the wrong hand signal? It just seems weird. And I could see if they were all trained singers who never performed with each other before, and she was the glue keeping it together. But it's a small town choir singing classic Christmas songs that everybody knows. I just didn't get why she was there, but... At one point, she brought up a guest conductor to the stage so she could be in the choir to sing one of her favorite songs called Santa Baby. (laughs) It just seems so odd. And when they were done with the songs, she would take a bow 
And then she would take a second bow while she pointed her arms towards the choir. And I'm thinking, you could just step aside and do the bow towards the choir because none of these people were clapping because you did such a great job conducting them. But she was a cute old lady, so it was funnier more than anything. But she really took it seriously. There was another weird part where they wanted us to stand for the singing of Hallelujah, like it was the national anthem or something. Apparently, it's a tradition there. So you know what I did? I took a knee. (laughs) Sure, people looked at me funny, but I just whispered, yelled at them, I'm praying. So (laughs) can't really argue with that. But uh, I did think it was, I did really do that, but I did think it was very odd because we weren't in a church and it didn't seem like a overly religious Christmas concert thing, even though Christmas is based on religion, but it it didn't seem like a religious thing. So having a stand for the singing of hallelujah was odd, but maybe that happens a lot of places and I just don't know it. Here's another thing that might be happening a lot that I wasn't aware of, but I'll tell you about it. I wanted to make something quick to eat yesterday couldn't decide what to make. It was going to be either eggs and toast or grilled cheese. And while I was trying to decide, it hit me, just make grilled cheese with a fried egg in it. So I made a soft fried egg, made a grilled cheese, put the egg inside, and it was really good. The texture of the egg went perfect with the gooiness of the cheese and the crunchiness of the bread. Sure, I'm not the first person to do it, but I've never heard of it before, and I thought I'd tell you guys in case you want to try it. Highly recommend it. Not sure how healthy it was, (laughs) but it was delicious. I need to get back in shape. I'm sure that didn't help, but I let stress get to me and gained about 5 or 10 pounds back in the last few months. Maybe more. Hopefully not. So I'm going to start working on that as my New Year's resolution. Wasn't going to bring it up, but I got a few emails from people saying that I inspired them to lose weight when I was getting into shape back in May. So I wanted to bring that up in case one of those people are struggling right now sticking to their diet or their workout program. Shit happens. Don't give up on yourself. Just get back on that horse. Even happened to me and uh, going to get back to it here soon. Haven't talked about this for a long time. Long time listeners may still be surprised that I'm playing this game after all the stalkers that I got from it, but I'm still playing Yahtzee on my phone. That's Y-A-H-T-Z-E. They added a feature where you can have your own group of 50 friends, so I started one for the podcast. Feel free to join it. The group is called We Don't Have Cookies. It's all one word. It's my favorite game to play and pretty much the only one I have on my phone, so it'd be a lot of fun to see you guys there. Speaking of games, loyal listener and all-around good guy, Chris Doyle tweeted to me to let me know that he aced the Yiddish or Quidditch game from the last episode, and big shout-out for playing along and letting me know how you did. Probably going to do more games like that next year. I thought it was fun. I want to give a couple of shout outs to people for helping spread the word about the show and promoting it on social media. Need all the help I can get with that because I'm really bad on social media and word of mouth is the best way. So if you have a spare minute or two, please let your friends and family know about the podcast by telling them either in person or sharing it on social media. Plus, it brings a smile to my face when I see you guys talking about the show. But shout out to Jake Hudson, who was on Twitter and listed me as one of his favorite podcasters and YouTubers. Very kind of you, and is an honor to be rated with some of the big names in that list. And shout out to Jason Lampro of the Mixed Media Forest podcast, who featured We Don't Have Cookies on his pod watch and helped spread the word about the show. Really appreciate that. And I know he's listening, so I want to say thanks and encourage you guys to check out his podcast. Speaking of podcasts, if you listen to the Bowling Alley podcast, I do the intro for it now. I want to thank Kenny for asking me to do that. It's pretty cool that I do the intro for his show, and his daughter-in-law does the intro for mine. The three of us, we've always worked pretty well together, and I think I'm the longest-lasting podcast relationship that Kenny has maintained. (laughs) He's had more co-hosts and falling outs than I've had guests. But uh, while I'm giving shout-outs... I want to thank all the people who were in the chat during the bowling alley last week that I was hosting. It was nice to see you guys. It was great to see Lone Wolf G-A-M out there. His name is Greg. You may remember him as the guy who named my beta fish Domino. Shout outs again to Chris Doyle and Jake Hudson. Also Aaron Holiday, Kieran McDonald. Uh, I'm sure I'm missing somebody, but if I did, sorry about that. But it was great to see you guys in there. 
and to see all the positive comments. I wasn't sure how it was going to go since I was brought in as a joke to pretend I was taking Daniel Spencer's spot as a co-host. There were three people who seemed pretty upset at the beginning, but by the end, I won them over, and I think they realized that it was all really just a big joke, even though (laughs) I'm sure it didn't seem like it at times. It got heated here and there, but it was nice to be back for a night, and it was a lot of fun. What's really going to be fun is the podcast meetup on Saturday, March 2nd at Dave & Buster's in Columbus, Ohio. There's going to be a podcast recording or two and a stand-up show. There's plenty of time to make arrangements to be there, and I'd love to see you. A lot of members of the We Don't Have Cookies family will be there, either in person or on Skype, like UFC Hall of Famer Dan the Beast Severn, comedian Dave Nelson from the Comedy of Go-Go podcast will be driving up from Georgia to be here, John the Songman will be Skyping in to sing songs live. YouTube sensation and weather enthusiast Frankie McDonald will be giving weather updates. Longtime frequent guest comedian Mike Canistero will be there and many more. There will also be drawings for prizes and Sam Dealey, the man who drew the podcast cover art, he's going to be there doing caricatures of people. You can order food and drink alcohol during the show, and when it's over, you can play a wide range of games from shooting hoops to video games, whatever you're into, or you can get there early and do that too. I'm even thinking about doing a stand-up set for the first time in years, just for that show, so you don't want to miss it. If you celebrate Christmas, I hope you have a good one, and if you'd like to do something nice for me for Christmas, please spread the word about the show. Leave a positive review wherever you're listening to this or like the Facebook page, facebook.com slash we don't have cookies. That would be great and very appreciated. As always, if you want to send me an email, you can send it to jason at we don't have cookies.com. Or if you have something to say that you want me to play on the show, you can leave a voicemail by calling 929-266-WDHC. That's 929-266-9342. That's it for me this week. I'll talk to you next Monday for the New Year's Eve episode. Thanks for listening. Tell your friends about the show and leave a review. See you next time. There were so many people pissed off at me. It was ridiculous.